Like I say, you and I see the power in it, the beauty in it. It's joyful to come together. We're going to talk more about that. I need you for just a moment to come with me 2,000 years ago and think about what it meant to share table fellowship with someone. To break bread at the table, at someone's table, to offer up hospitality, to share a meal, to sit around frequently reclined at table, passing around the bowls of different things that you would then dip your food into. You would take bread and dip that bread into the food and it would pass around the table. It was extremely communal. So one of the things about the table that was really critical is that if you were sharing table fellowship with someone, you were conveying an incredibly important message to them. And here's what it was. I am your friend, and I mean you no harm. I am your friend, and I mean you no harm. That's what it meant to share the table with someone. So it had a weight to it. Now these days, it's a little different. I mean, we eat lots of times with people we don't know that well, or sometimes for business, or other things where we gather together with maybe a group of people that we sort of know, right? It happens. But it was very different in that time. In the Jewish worldview, to eat with someone, especially around, even more so around, a specifically prepared table like the Passover table, it conveyed a powerful connection. At least it meant to. So Jesus gathers here, in the story we're about to read, the men he was closest to, his, dis his disciples. They were like his family. And he had poured into them over a period of several years. He loved them. He cared about them. He knew as well what they were about to face. And so when he gathers them around the table, again, as this precursor to the final week of his life, and what he is going to do to become the sacrifice for them and for you and for me, he gathers them around this last supper. He knew what they would be up against after Jesus's, after his death, his burial, his resurrection, and the coming persecution of the church that was going to happen in earnest not long after Jesus's death. But he also knew something about these men that only Jesus could know around that table. Their ministry, their discipleship, their proclamation of the gospel was going to change the world. But you know what? That, let me not put it in my own words. Let me tell you how the Bible puts it. In Acts chapter 17, verse 6, it is said of those disciples, the same ones that were gathered around that table with Jesus to break bread, it is said, these are the men who turned the world upside down. Brothers and sisters, may it be said of us. May it be said of us for the cause of Christ that people would say, and these people are turning things, turning the world on its ear. They're turning things upside down with how radically they love Christ and how radically they love one another and how radically they love their enemies and care for the poor and reach out to the sick and the dying, who reach out across all kinds of dividing lines. May it be said of us because it was said of them. The, the message at the table is a message of hope. It's set before us. It's set before the world as a message of hope. There is a table and you're invited. There is a table, and there is an open chair. And as disciples, you and I get the opportunity to slide it out. Here, please, come sit. The table means something, and you're invited. But here's the thing. I've asked you to put this in its first century, this whole story in its first century context. We're going to really dial in on that now. Grab a Bible. There's one in the pew in front of you. It'll be here on the screen. Maybe you got it on your phone. Any of these is good. Maybe you brought your own. Hey, what a great idea. 
Matthew 26, 17 through 30 is where we are. Matthew 26, 17 through 30. Let's look at this story. And then we're going to, boy, we're going to dive into this. I, I, you know, just hang with me through this because the Lord's got something for us today. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, my appointed time is near. Now, you and I know what that means now, 2,000 years later, but they didn't. They didn't know what that meant. Even though Jesus had told them and tried to warn them, they still didn't get that. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. 